wanted to start with a bit of the, the terminology and, and the names. Um, I often use, and people often use the term cloud native for applications. We're starting to see that term kind of used more broadly, maybe even overloaded a little bit. How do you consider that term? Is it still relevant in, in kind of today's environment? Mike, absolutely. The term cloud native is still relevant. And I think it's an awfully good and appropriate place to start our conversation around securing cloud native applications and environments. Uh, ESG's point of view around cloud native is awfully consistent with the CNCF. And in short, we view cloud native applications as those that are based on a microservices architecture that are run on elastic compute and equally important are managed and delivered vis-a-vis -vis iterative agile methodologies. So it's sort of one part technology and one part process. I noticed in the study the, the kind of discussion around maturity gaps as kind of a, a big problem as the cloud use grows. Can you talk a little bit about kind of how the study and how you're seeing maturity gaps kind of affecting people's security in the cloud? Oof fundamentally you're finding this issue of a um, cloud security readiness gap. You know, there's sort of the velocity or the rate at which organizations are consuming and delivering cloud native applications into production is well ahead of most organizations, unfortunately, their readiness, their sort of preparedness to secure those environments. I and mean, this is this is all about going fast after all. Um, this is going from waterfall, sort of del del deliberative waterfall approaches of defining application requirements and, you know, multi-quarter lead time to, pro to provision new infrastructure, going through, you know, RFIs and RFPs and evaluations. And, and now it's, you know, boom, I can stand up an instance and I've got a dev and a test environment and I'm in, I'm in production. And, and so, you know, very often, unfortunately, the, the, the cybersecurity program is sort of in this back of the heel sort of posture, sort of playing, playing catch up. And um, boy, this came through, really clearly in this year's research and almost nine out of 10 respondents, 88% of the respondents agreed this, with the statement that they need, they need to evolve their cybersecurity program to protect uh, cloud native applications and, and environments. Um, and you know that, that notion of maturity gap is sort of a generalized statement. And, and so there was additional ground recovered in the research with respect to sort of how that manifests um, so, you know, one of the other common refrains in, in cloud security over, over, the, over the years here has been this notion of a visibility gap. The top areas in which they need to ex expand their visibility to the organization's use of public cloud and cloud native environments is first of all, an audit trail of privileged accounts. And Mike, I'm sure we can pull on this thread quite a bit, but mm -hmm. it's just this notion of, you know, there are privileged user accounts. So, you know, developers that have highly permissive accounts, they're also highly permissive service accounts. Um, and the various reasons and sort of why that is and how those become, um, you know, attack targets through, you know, account takeover attacks, et cetera, for, for adversaries. The other one is around configuration. So, you know, organizations appreciate that um, configuration management plays a starring role here in, in modernizing their cloud security program. Um, and so when it comes to visibility gap, you know, really loud and clear was, hey, we need to understand, we need to gain visibility into, um, cloud um, server workloads, but also cloud services that are not compliant with industry standard based best practices and benchmarks, the CIES benchmarks obviously come to mind. Um, and then later, you know, in, in the study, we obviously wanted to shift from sort, from sort of problem space to solutions. And it's really clear when we get into some of the problems to solve for these, solves for some of these problems, is um, taking a full lifecycle approach to config management by leveraging a cloud security posture management control that can provide visibility pre-deployment. So being able to scan infrastructure as code templates, say, hey, before I push to production, I know whether or not I have um, any configuration vulnerabilities in those configs. And then obviously doing that in prod as well, because we have we have drift in production. The the dynamic we've talked about a little bit already on you know security teams unblocking development teams and and kind of those different perspectives really does open up a whole other conversation about, you know, who who is responsible for cloud native security? Is it still a security team problem? We hear a lot of terms like DevOps and DevSecOps and SecOps. In your research, how are you finding the roles of security evolving in organizations? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, first off, the acute shortage of cybersecurity skills, um, well, it's a perennial issue. You know, um, we we found vis-a-vis -vis another research project we do on an annual basis around technology spending attentions that um, cybersecurity is the number one area of a problematic shortage of skills as reported by 48% of respondents. Yeah. And uh, right behind that are is cloud architects. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about securing cloud native environments. And so, boy, th those are the top two areas of, of a, a, sh a shortage of problematic sh shortage of skills. And so um, it sort of then begs your question and also the role of automation that we'll I'm sure we'll get into, but which is sort of who's who's responsible. Um, I, I wish there was an easy answer here. Um, there's sort of good news, bad news. It, you know, it this truly is a team sport, right? So this is, uh, again, along those lines of program maturity, that's a great framing construct for this conversation because um, the more mature organizations truly are going to treat cloud security as a shared responsibility. There's a notion of shared responsibility between the cloud service provider and the subscriber to the services. Well, hey, what you know what? That concept of shared responsibility also applies internally. To answer your question, Mike, more specifically about what our research said, there was a notable change. And again, this has been an annual study, so we've been tracking this over the years. Um, a notable change that indicated a, a shift from a bottoms up to a tops down approach. So what does that mean? Um, you know, over the last, you know, half dozen years, seven years that we've at least had containers, obviously at cloud, you know, a long, long time before that. Um, cloud native security has been really driven out of the project teams in a discrete way. So project team X has um, a focus on getting a new you know, application to market and iterating that application. Um, and they define their own security policies. They procure their own controls. They could be using controls provided natively by the cloud service provider. They could be developing their own controls by scripting. They could be sourcing third party controls. And yet you have you had other project teams that were doing the same thing, but there was a lack of consistency. Um, and in fact, that was the number one problem statement in our research. So we asked respondents, hey, what's your top challenge in securing cloud native applications in their environments? And the respondents said, number one was lack of consistency across the disparate environments that host our cloud native applications. We talked about earlier how you know, these applications are deployed across hybrid multi-cloud environments. And, th and that consistency issue was in large part born out of project teams doing their own thing in using point tools. So you had this team using one type of control and this team over here using different control. A lot of forward progress here, which is great. Um, now what we're seeing is roughly three quarters of organizations are converging their teams. What are your views on kind of the evolution of these cloud security platforms? How do they fit into organizations versus those point tools that maybe were, were po more popular in the past? So th there's a lot to unpack here because, you know, there's um, <laughs> there's a dichotomy, you know. It's clear that organizations are moving toward the adoption of cloud native app application protection platforms. Um, in fact, you know, according to our research, um, organizations while they preferred separate controls or separate environments because of the perception that needed specialty controls, because that has increased cost and complexity, um, seventy three percent of the respondents shared with us that they prefer moving forward over the next 24 months, a consolidated set of controls based on an integrated platform that provides coverage across all of their um, cloud native stack environments, i.e. up and down the stack for the different server workload types, but also location agnostic across public and, and private clouds. Now, the other part to unpack here is sort of the role of the controls that are provided by cloud service providers. Mm -hmm. um, Defense in depth is still the name of the game here. I, I know that's sort of a, um, a more traditional cybersecurity, you know, term and approach, still highly applicable. Um, you know, there is telemetry we're getting out of um, things like cloud, cloud trail. There are, you know, security groups that are being used for host-based firewalls. All those controls provide a really important role as part of the defense in depth stack. Um, with that said, however, the more multi-cloud an organization is, the more likely it is, and I mentioned this earlier, that they'll need third-party controls that can provide consistency across environments. But with all that said, overwhelmingly, the trend here is consolidation, convergence, if you will, to these cloud native security platforms, um, because it, it addresses a lot of the challenges we've talked about today. It, it addresses mm -hmm. lack of consistency. Um, there's also a real operational issue, it's, which is sort of like, hey, you know, we need to improve 
efficacy. We also need, because of the acute shortage of cybersecurity skills, we need to improve operational efficiency. And if organizations are using multiple tools and multiple vendors for multiple environments, that siloed approach, it's just, it's costly, it's costly and it's complex. It also doesn't give you repeatability. And, um, you know, one of the things we sort of touched upon a little bit here is sort of the role of automation. I think one of the other um, hugely important aspects of the process piece of evolving the program is automation and therefore re repeatability. We've we've talked about a, a huge range of, of topics here today. And as we near the end of our time, if we want to get maybe a bit more specific for our viewers, if you could pick three top recommendations for them as they secure their cloud environments, what would you say? Yeah, Mike, I'm a um, big fan of the rule of three and just so happens that the three basic pillars of the cyber programs, not to keep this remedial, but offer one for people, one for process, and one for technology. And uh, I'm gonna start with people, because as I said, I think I think the cultural dynamic here is, is what's most important. It, needs, it has to be collaborative. Um, so I would encourage cybersecurity professionals to start to participate in sprint planning and daily scrums and to attend daily scrums to understand kind of the heartbeat, the rhythm of project teams and the speed at which they operate. Um, you know, agile software development and DevOps for that matter is just, it's all about collaboration and, and transparency and teamwork. Um, and mm -hmm. so that's the way security is going to be um, included as a feature in, in new builds so that, you know, they're, Cybersecurity user stories that are that are authored by a product owner and they're planned for a sprint and they're talked about in scrums and with an eye toward repeatability. But more specifically, look for technology controls to integrate into the CSCD tool chain. Um, mm -hmm. So that that you know that enables the people and process part. <laughs> so it's like as a cybersecurity you know leader and practitioner, it's going to be clear that you understand you know cloud native methodologies because you're going to be um, you know, offering up controls to integrate natively with those, with the, with the, with that, with that tool chain. And that's how you're going to support the process objective as well in terms of automation. So the three, definitely the three dots here connect, um, but it's really headlined by, you know, culture and collaborative approach. No, that's great. That's great, Doug. Those are really good recommendations. And I think really actionable for, for anyone watching to, to, to follow on. I, I love your comment on kind of integrating with the, the CI pipeline, CI CD pipelines and automation. I think we'll wrap it up here. I want to thank you, Doug, for joining us today. Really valuable insights. And I love all the research that went into this report and all the other findings. I want to give a big thank you to our viewers for watching and, and really just thank you for taking the time out of your day.